Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll read from The Cannibal's Cookbook, Mining Myths of Cyclopean Constructions by Brandon Clifford, published by Oro Editions. With rapid urban expansion, the future city will inevitably face a mountain of irregular demolition debris. This is not a new problem, the only difference is we have made it a lot worse for ourselves today. And we have negated the ways in which past cultures managed the problem of building debris management. This component of the manual unearths a number of these past techniques. It brushes off the dust, refines them with contemporary polish and offers them to you, reader, as tools for traversing this unprecedented building landscape. A plethora of early cultures created incredible architectures from material constraints, some out of necessity, while others out of conquest, appropriation or spirituality. With limited materials, flotsam stones and any available debris was integrated into the building system. Given our own impending crisis, we could learn a great deal from cultures that tackled this very problem. These architectures emerged from rubble to become timeless constructions. The cultures responsible for these works produced a variety of architectural types from this constraint, some of which commingle megalithic, polygonal and dry stack walls as example. While there are discernible differences between them, they are also interdependent. These terms deserve some unpacking. While it is helpful to define these terms, it is unhelpful to religiously categorize them. These stoneworks are interrelated, confused, ancestral and often hybrid. Megalith simply means big stone. The semantics of the term are overt, but the nuance of how megalith are implemented is subtle. Megalith is often confused with monolith. A monolith implies solidity of a single material. While megaliths are almost always monolithic, a monolith is not necessarily large. Any single stone is a monolith. Perhaps this conflation of terms has propagated an idea that a megalith is a single standing stone, like an obelisk, bracketed away from the complexity of assembly. As we will find, megaliths can and do compose walls. Another misconception of megaliths is that they are not only ancient, but stone-aged. Megaliths are occasionally argued to have been produced before the cultures we assume to surround them. Did the Druids construct Stone Age? Or was it Gog Magog, the legendary giant of English folklore? This evolutionary approach to architectural history places megaliths back before architecture. However, megaliths and megalithic architectures emerged around the world on a cadence of times. Machu Picchu was constructed in the mid-1400s, not to mention recent megaliths that are emerging at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Dry stone refers to assembling a wall without mortar. This ranges from rubble walls to precise stonework. While it is commonly assumed there is no mortar, it is a bit deceiving. In conventional masonry, mortar is used as an integral tool to accommodate the imprecision of the units. Mortar is not only a filler, but a tolerance adjuster. In the category of dry stone masonry, there can be mortar, but it is typically used to finalize what is already precisely fit together. Instead of allowing mortar to accommodate the tolerance differences between units, dry stone walls tend to adjust the stone itself, typically through carving or inserting other stones between to lock the stones together. Other types of stone walls that also fall inside this category are filled stone walls, retaining walls for terracing, galloway dikes and boulder walls. Polygonal masonry is composed of non-orthogonal masonry units for construction. This category of masonry does not rely upon standard units of construction, rather it lives in the possibilities of randomness. 
It assumes the assembly of irregular shaped stones occasionally fitting them together as found and often carving just slightly to ensure a better fit. This category of masonry is broad. It covers a litany of assembly types, from die stacking to rubble fill, from imprecise to precise, and from manageable in scale to megalithic. As the name suggests, these walls are composed of stones that are polygon shapes, more than four sides. This method ranges from precisely carved and fit, like Taravasi in Peru, to imprecise, like Alba Fusens. This technique is not just deployed in Peru, it can also be practical and provincial. Polygonal masonry systems focus on assembly over fit, often filling gaps between stones with smaller stones. Others explore a unique character of fit and shape, such as the Temple of Apollo at Delphi in Greece. While these seem to speak to explainable differences in means, methods, resources or perhaps cultural inclination, one category of polygonal masonry is uniquely shrouded in mystery. Hesiod's Theogony references Cyclops as part of a race of giants. These giants are the authors of megalithic stoneworks. Massive stones assembled dry are composed into a cohesive, compressive system. They project the illusion that they have been squeezed together by giants, given their precise assembly. The stones also appear to be assembled as found, as the stones still retain a rounded character. The attribution to Cyclops is no mistake. A mythical race of giants is the closest rational explanation for such an architectural feat. So rational, in fact, the ancient Greeks and Romans are not the only culture to arrive at this explanation. Though this form of masonry bears an Eurocentric title, it is anything but. Similar stone structures are found around the world among cultures having never encountered each other. Of these cultures, the Quechua, commonly Inca people of the Andes, produced the exceptionally precise, prolific Cyclopean masonry. Similar structures are also found at Rapa Nui, Eastern Ireland, at the Ahu Vinapu. This resemblance is uncanny, so much so it fooled the famed adventurer and amateur archaeologist Thor Heyerdahl. He falsely proposed that the Inca previously colonized Rapa Nui. This colonialist viewpoint has been detrimental to the pride of the Rapa Nui people, not to mention the Inca, given Heyerdahl's additional speculation that the Inca themselves were taught by a prior race of Europeans. While careful work by archaeologists Carl Lippo and Terry Hunt debunked these claims, the theory is pervasive. Extreme falsities are not unique with regard to these Cyclopean structures. It is perhaps no surprise that the idea of a primordial giant race is also not unique to Mycenae. These Cyclopean works of architecture evade a linear history. Despite eager attempts to attribute these wonders to a single culture, a people or a myth, these works are not the result of an architect. They are the inevitable result of a resource and a technology, or lack thereof. Whenever a similar set of resources and technology overlap, this architecture re-emerges, engendering new but similar myths around its miraculous appearance. Cyclopean masonry appears across varied geographical and time scales, tied only to the very limitations that generated. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.